Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. I can't speak for other traditions, but our Lutheran hymnal makes some effort to group hymns into sections. For example, our hymnal has sections of hymns for Advent and Lent and Easter and so on. There's also groups based on different topics, sections like baptism or Holy Communion, healing, hope and assurance, community in Christ. There's a section of hymns on prayer, one on trust in God, a section on lament, and one on commitment and discipleship, and more. These groupings are currently a help are certainly a help to those who are planning worship and choosing the hymns to be sure. But they can also help those of us in the pews too, as we are reminded of the theme of the hymn, that the hymn belongs to. Well, you may never have thought about it this way, but the book of Psalms in the Bible was ancient Israel's hymn book. And there are some Psalms that are collected together by topic in just that same way. Perhaps the most famous of those collections is called the Hallel Collection. There are all sorts of psalms, some with themes for traveling to Jerusalem, some laments, some cries for help or deliverance, and more. But Psalms 113 through 118 are a special group of psalms all centered around praise of God. The word Hallel means praise, and you might see that word as the root of the word hallelujah. Just to finish that idea out, Yah in Hebrew typically means God. So hallelujah literally means praise God. So I invite you along this week as we make our way through these psalms of praise and then perhaps see how they can help us grow in our own praise of God. Our first one is Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high? who looks far down on the, on the heavens and the earth. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his peoples. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. This psalm is divided into three sections. Verses 1 through 3 are a call to praise God. Verses 4 through 6 point out God's identity as a reason to praise God. And verses 7 through 9 point out God's activity as a reason to praise God. Right away in verse 1, <clears throat> the psalm invites the servants of God to offer praise. And we have to ask, what does it mean to be a servant of God? At least part of that answer is to submit our whole selves to God that we are subject to our master in all things, in all things. The rest of the psalm can be very challenging for us as well. Throughout this psalm, God is high and exalted, and yet God is found among the lowly. I remember an old tale called The Fisherman and His Wife. A fisherman and his wife were poor and lived in a pigsty. One day the fisherman caught a magic fish who begged to be let go, and he would grant a wish. And to satisfy his complaining wife, the fisherman asked for a small cottage for them to live in instead of this pigsty. Of course, after a while, the wife wasn't satisfied with the cottage, and the fisherman caught the fish again and asked for a larger home. And on and on this went until they lived in a castle like a king. Then the wife sent her husband out to catch the fish again and to ask that they live like God. The fish said, go home. She's back in the pigsty again. I've always understood this story as a way of saying that our high and exalted God can be found most among the poor and lowly. 
Samuel's mother Hannah and Mary the mother of Jesus both celebrate how God exalts the lowly. So today perhaps we need to ask do we look for God among the powerful and exalted or among the poor and lowly? How are we involved in God's work to lift up the poor and lowly? What does all this have to do with being a servant of God? Those can be hard questions for us. The Bible says that after Jesus shared the Last Supper with his disciples, they sang a hymn before going out to the Garden of Gethsemane. Many biblical scholars believe that the hymn they sang was this psalm. Perhaps as Christ gives himself for us, we might begin to understand what being a servant of God really means. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.